Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can use an NVIDIA Jetson Nano with the Ultralytics framework. So we're basically going to cover all the different aspects of it, all the way from how you can install it to the different specs for the different Jetson boards available from NVIDIA. Then we're going to take a look at what are some of the advantages of using a Jetson Edge device when you're using Ultralytics YOLO models. And it is basically because we have some optimized frameworks, it can run significantly faster, we can export our models into an engine file and use TensorRT to basically just increase our inference speed significantly without losing any accuracy. So let's just jump straight into it. Let's see how we can set up a Jetson Nano with the Ultralytics documentation. So if we start inside the Ultralytics documentation on the home tab, we can then go inside the guides and we have a bunch of different guides for pretty much everything in here that you can use the Ultralytics framework for. We have a ton of videos for pretty much all of them in here, but we have the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. So let's just go inside of that one. We can take a look at the different edge devices. First of all, you can read a bit about it, some key highlights, what is an NVIDIA Jetson, but it's basically just an embedded computer board, which is called an edge device. We can take our models, we can train them, just as we do in all the other videos here on the channel. We can take a data set, train a custom model, then we can export that model and run it on an edge device. Could also be in the cloud, but this is one option to use if you want to run it on the edge and as fast as possible. And it's also a relatively small chip here where you get a lot of performance from NVIDIA. So if you scroll a bit further down, some of the fun parts come here with the Jetson series comparison. So there's different types of boards that you can buy, starts at a very low price, and then it basically just increases up here based on the AI performance, the GPU, and also the CPU and memory inside those boards. So if you start with the lowest option, which is a Jetson Nano, it's a pretty common board. You've probably heard about it, maybe play around with it yourself, but we don't really get very good AI performance compared to some of the more popular boards. It is significantly more expensive, but you also get a lot better AI performance if you want to run real-time AI systems. So we could probably go up here. Some of the most popular ones are the Jetson RN NX and also the RN Nano 8 gigabytes here. So where we can see we get 100 tops here, which is basically just tensor operations per second. 40 and over here to the right, we don't really get good performance. So this is like giga floating point operations per second. So the AI performance varies significantly compared to which of the ports that you're taking. If you want to run real-time performance, maybe you want to run multiple streams with NVIDIA DeepStream and so on, you probably need to go up and take one of these ports here. The Jetson Nano is also very powerful if you can get away with a few frames per second. We can see the GPU architecture that they're using, the frequency, so how many cores the GPU has, and also what frequency are those cores running at. We have the CPU and also the memory. So when you have an NVIDIA Jetson Nano, we need to install an NVIDIA Jetpack on it, which basically just takes all the frameworks, all the different tools from NVIDIA, packages into a Jetpack, then we install that image or that Jetpack on our NVIDIA Edge device board or on a Jetson board. And then we're pretty much good to go. We can use the Jetpack SDK, need a host machine, then you can just flash the image onto the Edge device. You're pretty much good to go. We don't really need to do any other installations than Autolytics and some PyTorch. Then we're good to go. We have CUDA, we have TensorRT, DeepStream, all of that can be configured and be used out of the box. So here we can see some details about how we can flash Jetpack to NVIDIA Jetson. There's tons of guides out there, but this is pretty easy to follow. You can use the NVIDIA development kit. They also have an SDK, a package manager here. So the SDK manager where you can just like plug it into your computer, into your host machine and flash it directly and you're good to go. Then we need to set up Autolytics. You can either do that with Docker and also without Docker. With Docker, it is just this single command that you need to run, but we can also do it exactly in the same way as if we are on any other system. We can use just pip installed Autolytics package so we can play around with that and just run Python scripts as we're used to. The second thing here that we need is most likely PyTorch. We can then go in and install it. These are the installation scripts. Just copy paste them directly depending on which Jetpack version you're on and also what PyTorch version you want to use. We also need ONNX runtime because often when you convert your models, you need to have them in an ONNX format first and then it will convert that to an engine file, which is basically just the file format that they're using for TensorRT. So one of the main benefits of using NVIDIA boards is that we can convert it to this optimized framework called TensorRT. And we also have a ton of resources about it in here, so you can definitely check that out. But it's basically just an optimization framework. We convert our model into TensorRT and it will run significantly faster. We're going to take a look at some benchmarks in just a second. 
and it can even run it all in parallel. NVIDIA is going to take care of it. We also have the DeepStream library where you can take, for example, let's say that you have five or 10 streams. If you run that on a Jetson Nano Orange, for example, you can probably run 30 frames per second on eight to 10 different streams at the same time. It's going to take care of all the synchronization. You can just specify with some configurations, the video path or an RTPS stream and so on. So it's very easy to work with. Use Tensor RT on NVIDIA Jetson. I already just mentioned that. With the Autolytics framework, we only have a few lines of code or use the command line directly. We pull the model, we specify which format we want to export the model into, and then we just specify an engine file. If you're using Street Dream and so on, you can also just take the ONNX model and use that. It's going to generate the engine file automatically when you run a lot of the Tensor RT and also just the NVIDIA frameworks. Then we can load the model here, run inference directly with the Autolytics package as well, but you can also use the model separately with the whole NVIDIA suite, which is installed with the Jetpack on your device. So let's now go down and take a look at the benchmarks, but this is how easy it is to play around with. We just need to follow a couple of installation steps. This whole guide takes you through every single step. You need to do a couple of copy paste here and there, few installations, and we're good to go. So this is probably one of the cool things. It is the YOLO V8 benchmarks with PyTorch, TorScript, and also TensorRT. The inference time here is per image by model size and also the format. So we can see that this is running on an NVIDIA Jetson or an NX16 gig at floating point 32 precision and 6040 image size. So this is one of the higher end Jetson boards. So you definitely need to take that into account when you just take a look at the inference time here. It will be significantly slower if you go for some of the lower end models, but we still get very good performance from a board at this size. So if you just take a look at the nano model, let's just say that we are around 15 milliseconds here for basically just processing a single image, which is pretty close to 60, 70 frames per second that we can squeeze out of this Jetson board with the YOLO V8 nano model. We also have the YOLO V8 small model here around 20. So here we get 50 frames per second and then the inference speed is basically just increasing here for the model size. If you want a detailed comparison table, you can also run all of these benchmarks on your own computer, on your own device. Doesn't really matter if you're using an NVIDIA device, but we have a video covering that. We just need to call the benchmark command and it's going to do benchmarks with your model specifically on the hardware and frameworks on your computer. So for this model model, we can see the size on the disk, mean error position of 0.50 to 0.95. And here we can see if the error position is actually decreasing depending on which of the frameworks that we're converting our model to. So we can see we actually have lower mean error position when we just have the raw PyTorch version compared to the Tensor RT version in this example here. And also the inference time here we can see it is 18 milliseconds with Tensor RT. It is around 15. So it's basically just an increase in time with 25%. So just by converting a model into a Tensor RT engine, running that on your hardware, again, it can both run on any NVIDIA GPU. Then we basically just get 25% speed up for free. This can make our applications run faster, but it can also reduce the cost on your GPUs if you're just doing batch processing or processing a ton of different images over time. This is how you can reproduce the results for the different benchmarks. I just mentioned that we have a single command. So benchmark, and then you can choose the data set that you want to run the benchmarks on. So say that you have your own custom trained model, your own data set, you have specific hardware for the different framework. You can just benchmark it yourself, take a look at the results. It's just going to take a few minutes and then you have all the information available on your own data set and model. Here we have some base practices when using NVIDIA Jetson. There's some different configurations. Here we need to make sure that we're enabling max power mode. We can also go in and enable all the CPU and GPU cores. So they're running at maximum frequency, max power mode, max frequency. And then we can use the Jetson stats to go in and take a look at what is the temperature of our different cores, both for the CPU and also the GPU, what percentage is the different cores running at and also the GPU and the total number or like the total frequency that we're running at for each core and also the GPU. So this is pretty cool just to go in and see, okay, how is it actually performing both before you run, but also while you're running your applications, how much are you actually squeezing out of the hardware that you're running on? Can you squeeze out a bit more or do you need to upgrade your hardware to be able to run faster. So this is pretty much just covering everything with NVIDIA Jetson from the Autolytics framework. Everything works smoothly, integrated together. It's just a few installations connected together. Use the Autolytics framework and you're good to go. 
And as you saw, you can get significant speed upgrades by just using this out of the box. And it is a good board. It's very small, easy to set up, and then you can use it for real world applications and projects. Connect the camera to your Jetson, and then you basically have real world computer vision project up and running. Take a data set, train your model, connect it all together, glue it together, and then you're good to go. So definitely go in, check this guide out here. If you have an NVIDIA Jetson, I encourage you to try it out on your own because you will be mind blown by the results that you can get from just such a small board. So thank you a lot for watching this video here, guys. I hope you have learned a ton and then you got some insights into how this NVIDIA Jetson framework works together with Autolytics. It's very cool. Definitely check it out. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.